Hey there. Uh, some time ago, we've actually done this a couple times, we looked at uh, uh, linear systems that pop up in various types of problems and the fact that a lot of these times these, these matrices that represent these linear systems end up being sparse. And off of the top of my head, I think we did this when we talked about, um, we were doing a Monte Carlo simulation to do like stock, uh, stock market uh, statistics and the equations that generated our kind of our, our ensemble of stock prices turned out to be linear and sparse. And then we also did something similar in differential equations or boundary value problems where we used a, a finite difference approach to approximate the derivative and we got this whole system of algebraic equations and again it was sparse. And the advantage of doing that, uh, the representing those systems in that so sort of way was the fact that we basically turned, uh, turned it into a linear algebra problem where all we had to do was find an inverse of a matrix. And because the fact of the matrix was sparse, we didn't really have to store all of those basically empty zero uh, elements. So if the matrix was 10,000 by 10,000 and you had only, <coughs> it was tridiagonal, so you only had the Sorry about that, I had a bit of a coughing fit there. Um, if it was 10,000 by 10,000 and it was tridiagonal and you only have uh, non-zero elements on the diagonal and the one above and below it, basically you can only store 30,000 numbers as opposed to 10,000 times 10,000, which is what, 100, 100 million? And in addition, there are sparse uh, matrix algorithms that speed up basically the calculation of the inverse. So the question came in, uh, what about uh, nonlinear linear equations? And can you do something similar uh, with those? And the answer is no, but sort of. And this will become clear as we go through the notebook, but the no part is you just, it's, it's more complicated than just finding the inverse of a matrix. However, the yes part is you can still represent the system in some sort of sparse manner and pass it to a nonlinear solver. And we're going to be using SciPy's um, fSolve function as well as the same function fSolve in MATLAB. And the issue in Python at least is going to come up. The code is basically needs, needs to calculate the, it's called the Jacobian matrix. It's for the purpose of this video, think of it as the derivative of, of your matrix. Uh, it needs to calculate that. And as far as I know, Python cannot handle sparse Jacobian uh, matrices. So that'll be a big hindrance if you want to stick to Python. MATLAB, however, it can. And we're going to show uh, basically how to do that uh, with, with MATLAB. And the code is very similar to Python. So if you know Python, you basically uh, know MATLAB. So um, rather than just uh, having me sit here and talk about it, let's get into a notebook and into MATLAB and, um, and work, work out a few simple problems. Okay, so here's our notebook and here's just a linear problem we're going to solve as a quick refresher. I'm not going to dwell on, it, dwell on this because we have done it before. So it's just this differential equation with these boundary conditions. So the function evaluated at x equal to 0 is equal to 1 and the function evaluated at pi over 2 is equal to 0. So so we're going to do something similar with a nonlinear problem. So I'm just taking the same equation here basically and just cubing this y value and the boundary conditions are still going to be the same. So, um, and the approach for both is going to be very similar. So we're going to make an approximation of the second derivative with this difference formula here, basically just using a central difference formula. And then um, our differential equation is going to re transform itself into a series of algebraic equations like this. So if you have n, uh, if we divide our, our spacing into n points, we're going to have n equations of this 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 form here. And if we split our uh, split it up into like five spaces or six spaces here, we have this is what our system would look like. So our boundary condition is here: y one is equal to one y6 is equal to 0, and then in these intermediate, val intermediate values of, of this index, we have these uh, algebraic equations to solve. Now, again, this is a linear system. We can write it like this in terms of matrices, and you can see here that, again, this, um, this matrix here is tridiagonal and is, is sparse, so most of the entries are going to be 0, especially for a large, um, large number of equations. I'm just doing, it, doing 6 here to fit on the, uh, fit on the screen. So it's this matrix times our unknowns plus this matrix, this identity matrix um, times our unknowns is equal to our known vector. And um, 
our known vector is just this. This is the boundary condition. Our differential equation is zero equal to zero everywhere else. And then again, it's zero at the, uh, the right-hand boundary. So you can co combine these into one matrix equation here like this. So, you know, you have a square matrix plus a square matrix is another square matrix. You can just invert this and you basically solved the problem. I'm just going to do this uh, quickly here. And again, I'm not going to talk through it that much because we've already uh, done so. So, so, okay, I'm going to use the uh, sparse diags command, which I've imported up above here to generate our sparse matrix, our sparse uh, derivative matrix, which I called uh, D2 for second derivative. So this temp variable here, which I'm just using to store these diagonal elements, as you can see, it's going to be ones on this uh, lower diagonal, minus two, and then one again. So that's what this is. This goes in here, uh, right here. And then we tell it which diagonal is minus one, zero, uh, one. So minus one is this lower diagonal, zero is the main, and one is this um, kind of first above the main. And uh, that's it. You need to also pass in the size of the matrix. So it's um, it's the length of our x vector, uh, and that's the square matrix. So it's that, that squared. And then I create an identity matrix that's this here. Um, that's the same size. So I forgot I never really defined x, so let me do that. So I'm going to insert that up here, and I'm also going to calculate um, uh, the difference delta, which is here. So um, we're just going to use the lens space to create our x, um, our grid points, our grid points in the x direction. And I'm just using the diff command just to, to take the difference of that. And rather than having a fixed number of points here, I'm going to call this capital N. And over here, I'm going to say N is equal to 100. Let's just see if that runs. And I bet I didn't uh, do my import. So import all that. There we go. So let's create a uh, cell block below. Uh, actually, let's do the calculation up here. So um, I'm going to create a matrix M that is basically just uh, our D2 matrix divided by delta squared plus that identity matrix. That's, that's this quantity here. Um, and then I'm going to reset some of these elements. So in our, uh, our equation here, we do not have a, a number, um, a, a minus two in this point here. Likewise, we don't have one down here. So I'm just kind of resetting that uh, to make the problem, um, uh, to make our matrices actually match the problem. So now we just need to create a vector of known. So I'm just going to call that knowns. So that's just basically a vector of zeros. And when we need to make the first element of that, uh, so the first element is equal to one, and that's this vector here. So it's one and then all zeros. And now we're ready to solve for our y variable. So y is equal to sparse solve m knowns. Does it run? Seems to. So down here, let's just plot it out to see if it's a decent solution. So it's x comma y. We'll make it a black line, I guess. And that's it. And you can tell I was kind of fooling around with MATLAB beforehand. PLT.plot. So there's our solution. So now let's move on to our nonlinear problem. So what we're trying to solve now is this. If you were to recast it in matrix form, we have the second derivative here of, of y with respect to x is equal uh, plus y cubed is equal to our vector of knowns. So now you just can't do this factorization and inverse because you have all these cubes here. Um, you, you're kind of stuck. So as I said in the introduction, both SciPy and MATLAB have this function called fSolve, which solves nonlinear equations of this form down here. So this is a vector valued function f, and it takes a, a vector x as an argument, and it solves f of x equals equal to zero. So basically to put this into this form, all we have to do is subtract this vector from each side. Um, in fact, let me do that explicitly. Let me, uh, I'll just edit this matrix here. So the equation we want to solve, uh, my equal sign is now a minus sign and this is equal to zero. <clears throat> so that's all we have to do to put it into a format that F solve can take. Now, uh, since I want to pass in uh, things like delta F solve, in MATLAB cannot take any additional arguments and in Python in theory it can but I've never been able to get it to work. So what I'm going to do is kind of wrap everything in a class so that our 
this function that we write here can see the uh, other class variables. So I'm going to create a class called nonlinear. So uh, we're going to define our constructor. We're just going to call everything from the constructor. Uh, so we're going to copy a bunch of this stuff here. And I'm going to make these all class uh, class variables. So it's going to be self.n. Uh, what's happening here? Self.n, self.x, self.delta. So basically, I copied this from up above here. Uh, I'm going to create this derivative matrix. I'm going to call it uh, D2 again, just like I did up there. <clears throat> and our identity matrix, and these are going to be, again, class variables here. Uh, we need to create a vector of knowns. So here is our vector of knowns. And again, it's a class variable. Let me just uh, see if it runs. It seems to. Now let us define our function uh, here, our f of x. So uh, we'll define the function. We'll just call it equations. Let's just call it equation singular. Uh, it needs the class, um, it needs the self argument and our vector of unknowns, uh, that's gonna be y. So here's kind of the bulk of our equation here. This is the matrix part of it. Uh, it's our derivative matrix times y plus our identity matrix times that vector of y cubed here. So um, yeah, here's the derivative. Again, this is d squared. And this is um, our identity and times y cubed. And I reset the uh, first and last elements to correspond properly up here. And then I basically this is our actual equation we're solving. So we're going to return this residual vector, and that's our matrix equation here. These, these guys minus our vector of knowns. And then I just explicitly make sure we're putting the right boundary conditions in. And I still need to uh, return this, don't I? Return res. Does that run? Seems to. So up here, uh, let's do it here. Now let's call f solve. So y is equal to f solve. Spelling things properly helps. f solve. We need to pass in our um, our equation system here. So it's going to be self dot equation. And we also need a an initial guess for these y values. So let's just make them all one half. So uh, that should do it. Um, uh, let's make this a class variable so we can get at it. Self dot y run. And now down here, let's create, I don't know, we, we, uh, we'll just call it a dummy variable a. And that's equal to our nonlinear system. And it to zero. Um, oh, this needs to take uh, self as an argument, doesn't it? Run, run. Um, do, 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 do. What's going on here? Oh, this needs to be self.x, right? Self.x and self.delta. Self.delta has no equation. Self.equation. F solve is a problem, has no equation. Did I spell it right? Equation? Equation. There's no typos that I see. Oh, you know what it is? Is the indentation. This has to be moved back. So let me just do that. That should do it. Okay, fixed it. Seems to run. Let us plot it out. So plt.plot, uh, a dot x, a dot y, and we'll make it a black line. Okay, so what's the issue here? I mean, yes, we're not using the matrix inverse uh, to get to the uh, solution, but it still works. Well, let me come back up to the linear system up here, and let's change n to 10,000. 
So sometimes you need a very uh, fine grid spacing, and sometimes you have uh, like multiple systems of equations to solve. So 10,000 is easily a number that's uh, viable. Let's run this, and it just solves it instantly. So let's come down here to the nonlinear one and do the same thing. 10,000, run, and now let's actually try to solve it. And I'm not going to wait here for this to finish. It takes about uh, 20 minutes or so to actually get the answer. So <clears throat> what's going on here? A lot of these nonlinear solvers, like think of Newton's method. You, didn't, you need to know the derivative of the function uh, that you're trying to solve, the, uh, find the root for. And this is the same, same thing, except it's not a derivative in this case. It's a matrix, uh, what's known as the Jacobian matrix which is defined here on the Wikipedia page. I'll put the link to this, uh, this page in, in the video description. But it's basically the derivative of every component of the, um, every x component, the derivative with respect to every of those x sub i grid points um, for each of these, um, these f values. So for every y sub i we're trying to solve for you, we need a derivative with respect to all of the x components. So in this case, uh, what we're talking about now, this is going to be a 10,000 by 10,000 matrix. Not only that, uh, the computer is working this out. We never specified what the Jacobian is. So it's trying to determine it numerically. So it's actually doing like a finite difference type approach across um, 10,000 by 10,000 to 10 to the eighth uh, points. And most of those points are zero. So that's just um, causing it to slow down. As you can see, it's still up here. It's still trying to calculate. So I'm actually going to shut this down because I'm not going to wait like the 20 minutes for it to take to solve it. Now, while the Jacobian of this system is easy to easy to figure out, um, in fact, it's a tridiagonal sparse matrix again. Uh, in reality, a lot of the times you just can't, uh, the systems are just too complicated. You can't either work out the derivatives easily or there are just too many, um, too many variables involved. Um, <clears throat> so the computer has to do it. And if that were the case here, um, you know, we're out of luck. We just have to deal with the fact that it'd be ridiculous, ridic ridiculously, ridiculously slow. Um, <clears throat> for the sake of completeness, I don't really want to give away the punchline, but I guess I'm going to. Uh, you can, can provide a Jacobian for this, and I'm going to actually uh, code it out. The issue is that SciPy, uh, the f solve function, cannot handle a sparse Jacobian in this, in this format, a sparse a matrix. It has to return a full matrix. So you're not gaining a hell of a lot of speed by doing that. In fact, um, on my test code when I ran it, it was actually slower. But just for the um, sake of simplicity, what I'm going to do is set this back to... Um, I'll make it 1,000 instead of 10,000, and I will write out that Jacobian and just show you how to do it. And then what we'll do is switch over to MATLAB, which can handle sparse Jacobians, and we'll just we'll look at the difference in performance, and it's it's not even not even close um, the difference in performances between uh, the sparse matrix and the non-sparse matrix. So I'm going to type out the function. I'm going to call it Jack for Jacobian. So I'm not going to go over the derivation of the Jacobian. It's pretty obvious uh, how to calculate it. So this builds it, and again, it builds it in a sparse matrix format. But since we cannot return a sparse matrix, we have to return a full matrix. I just make it a, a NumPy array when I send it out of this function. So now we just come up here. Uh, where is my f cell function? Uh, here it is. So the way you uh, send in the Jacobian is you uh, use the argument f prime. And that is equal to that Jacobian function. So it's self.jack. So that should run. Run it. Run it. Oh, that's right. The kernel actually had to be restarted because it was kind of locked up. So let me just rerun everything. Run all. I have a typo in the Jacobian function. So let's rerun it now. This is a thousand points. So it does it relatively fast. So what I'm going to do is reproduce this in MATLAB. I'm going to uh, shut off the recording software and restart it in a way I can uh, show multiple windows. And I just want to show the speed difference by, um, by returning a sparse matrix, which you cannot do with uh, NumPy. So let me go do that. Okay, so this is the same code uh, in MATLAB, and it works the same way. And again, I wrote this whole thing kind of wrapped in a class uh, just so I can pass um, additional information into the fcell function. Um, right now I have it set to 100 points and it does not use the Jacobian, so it has to compute it itself. So if we run this, 
Uh, it solves it quickly enough. Um, let's see, how much time did it take? Fraction of a second, so 0.14 seconds. Let us just increase the uh, number of points to a thousand. Run it, and you can see it's much, much slower. I'm not exactly sure how long this will take. I tested it with 10,000 earlier. But you can see there's a, a significant slowdown here. So I'll just uh, stop recording. Okay, so obviously I edited this down because it took uh, 104 seconds. So almost two minutes. So I already know that 10,000 points is going to take about an hour and a half. So that's obviously, I'm not going to not going to run that at the moment. But what I'm going to do, at least I'm not going to run it this way. I'm going to come down here and turn on our Jacobian. And our function returns, let's see if I can find it here. Here it is. Our function actually returns a Jacobian that's a sparse matrix. So let's run that now. Now this will take an hour and a half uh, normally. Let's see how long it takes to run with the sparse Jacobian. So again, obviously edited uh, for time's sake, but this took only 24 seconds as opposed to an hour and a half. And for completeness, uh, a lot of cases you can't calculate the Jacobian, but MATLAB allows you to tell the solver what the Jacobian looks like. So which areas are non-zero, which areas are zero, which can speed things up, although in this case it, it doesn't. It still takes about an hour and a half uh, to do, so not quite sure why, but... Um, this video has gone on longer than I thought. I thought this was just going to be a quick 10 minute video and we're now considerably over that. So let's call it quits. Cool. Uh, that's about it. As usual, I will put the notebooks up on GitHub and I will also make, uh, make available the, the MATLAB code that basically does the same thing. So if you have a, a copy of MATLAB you can play around with, you can also, um, you can also work with the uh, sparse matrix representation of the Jacobian. So yeah, until next time, I will see you later.